Hello. I just wanted to jump on really quick and give you guys a word of encouragement about disappointment. Um, I just came off of a week of vacation and I encountered something early on in my vacation that was just so utterly disappointing to me. And I, I struggled with it and I called a friend and couldn't seem to get over it and called another friend and couldn't seem to get over it. And all my tools that I normally use to, to overcome things or to walk through things, that just nothing was working. And so I finally, I called a mentor and I said, I am just, I'm stuck in disappointment. I'm like trapped in disappointment and I, I need some help here. And I asked her, I said, what is the antidote to disappointment? And, you know, she's like, that's a, that's a really great question. Let's press them together. Because if there's, if somebody has unforgiveness, I have tools. I actually have quite a bit of tools to be able to walk somebody through an encounter or through exercises to work through that forgiveness to move into, I'm sorry, unforgiveness to move into forgiveness um, and to release that. I have tools if somebody is really sad, how to release that sadness to the Lord. I have, I have tools for offense. I, I have all these tools in my tool bag. But I realized that there's actually something in my life that when I get disappointed, I actually kind of stay stuck for a little bit. And that for me, disappointment is one of the hardest things for me to step over. And so as we were pressing in, she said, you know, the, the antidote, the solution, the opposite of being disappointed is actually praise. And I remember I said to her, I said, I don't want to praise. When I'm in the middle of being disappointed, I don't want to, I don't feel like praising. And she said, no more than you feel like forgiving when you're offended or you feel like letting go when you, when you feel sad. And so I, I was like, wow, there's really something opposite spirit on this. And so we were sitting with this and all of a sudden I remembered, and this is actually a teaching that I have for parents. And it, it has to do with the Make It Wish Foundation. If you're familiar with that, we have heard about these, um, these stories where they ask these young kids that are going through medical crisis, you know, like, what is, what is your wish? Is it to be a, with a princess? Is it to be with a ball player? What is it? But the backstory of that is that um, they were noticing that children that were going through profound trials, that they were, um, um, that a very small percentage of them were surviving, that they were um, like medical issues. And um, most of them were dying, but a very small percentage of them were surviving. And so they did all these tests, and they were trying to figure out what's the difference between this camp and this camp. And the only difference between the two is that those that survived their procedures, and they were really risky, life-threatening, um, or life-saving procedures, um, the only difference between the two is that this camp had a higher level, a higher chemical in their brain than this other group did. And it, come on, let's just unpack that. When that chemical is at the highest, they were able to like literally endure something very challenging, very difficult, and they were able to choose the life where those that had a lower chemical were actually dying. I just, I feel like that is so unbelievably powerful. And so they did this study. This is not a Christian thing. This is a secular medical thing. And they did a study and they said, well, what is that chemical? How do we increase that chemical? How can we make a synthetic chemical or how can we, how can we increase that? And the only way to increase that chemical is through joy. Come on. Joy releases a chemical in our brain that actually gives us the will to fight when we go through very, very difficult, um, challenging circumstances. And so what they do with Make It Wish is they bring these children into the place of joy to, to meet their princess or the ball player right before procedure. So what we don't see with the backstory is right after they've seen that the, the princess, there's a, probably within 24 hours, they are doing um, the procedure on this child. And then we know that the success rate, um, survival rate is much higher. So unpacking that, going back to my, um, my disappointment, is um, as I was talking to my mentor, she just said, and there's something about praising God. So I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed that something was lost or stolen or didn't turn out the way that I thought it would or overwhelmed me. I'm, you know, just that feeling of just, oh, I'm so disappointed. But praise actually brings you back into the place of releasing those joy chemicals of, yes, this is a bummer, but look what God can do with it. Yes, this didn't turn out, but God is a redeemer. Yes, this was stolen, but God can give back 10 times over. And it releases that chemical. So let, let me say it this way. When we are excited about something and we, are, we have like anticipation, that releases a joy chemical. When we get disappointed, we don't get that surge of that joy chemical, but then the opposite happens. It actually depletes that chemical in our brain. And I think that's really what I was struggling with is I could not reset some of the chemicals 
in my brain with a disappointment. And so I went after praise. I went after worship. I just went after praising God. You are so good in this situation. You can take the disappointment of this and you can turn it into something so sweet. You can turn it into something that is so magnificent. And it, it starts resetting us back to that place of expectation and joy. And it literally is shifting something physiological in our, in our brains. Anyways, I just wanted to release that to you today. And I just want to encourage you, take that which is most disappointing in your life, and I want you to smear praise all over that. Not maybe because you feel like it, not maybe because you have the evidence um, of, of being joyful in your circumstances, but we praise in the one um, who is worthy of being praised and who is able to take that disappointment and turn it into something good. Okay? Walk, be intentional and walk through that encounter this week. All right. Bless you.